In this video, we're going to talk through exactly how to understand your target market better so that you can produce amazing content, conversion-based content that helps you to land more clients, get noticed, get stood out, and separate yourself from a busy marketplace. And this is really, really powerful because what most people do when they're looking for their buyer persona, when they're looking for a client avatar, which is, by the way, just another way of saying the person most likely to buy from you, who perceives you as valuable and who has a problem that they need solving and you can solve and there'll be an exchange of money if you can position yourself correctly. That's exactly what we're going to do in this video. And it used to be in, in lots of coaching programs and lots of, you know, business coaching 101, it'd be like fill in a PDF and write all this stuff down, but that was nowhere near deep enough. And if you wanted to go deep in the past, it would take a long, long time and you'd have to go through Amazon book reviews and you'd have to go through all sorts of stuff. So what we're going to do in this video is show you exactly how to find your ideal client avatar buyer persona, show you how to connect with them emotionally, show you their problems they're dealing with depending on the stage of their life, showing what they look for in terms of status, their primary emotions, their secondary emotions. Let's take you through this and let's first of all illustrate a key point with this. And the key point is this, most people are still, whether they think it or not, at the top level, at the surface, which isn't deep enough to be competitive. And we're going to use that by contrasting the example of King Charles and Ozzy Osbourne of Black Sabbath. I'm British and I grew up there. And even if you're not British, you probably will know them. But let, let me explain the point that I mean, right? If you look at KC, which means King Charles, right? He's a boomer. He's part of that generation. He's English. He's got two kids. He's married twice. He's had business success, he's wealthy, and he likes dogs. That's usually how far that these analysis go before AI came. But then if you look at Ozzy Osbourne, who I think we can all agree is, is a totally different individual and behaves in different ways and has different preferences and tastes, but he's a boomer, he's English, he's got two kids, he's married twice, he's had business success, he's wealthy, and he likes dogs. So if you're using the old way, it's going to be really, really difficult. And we're gonna have everything written out for you so that you can just paste in all the data from the internet, because by the way, ChatGPT now has a capacity for greater data. It can analyze it, pull it out, and I'll take you right through to doing a post. What do I mean by doing a post? Here you can see this is the framework we're following, a demographic, where most people go, psychographic, some people go there, AI analysis, which nobody that I'm seeing is, is using this smartly to do this, and conversion-focused output. We'll take you through the whole lot. We've got all the prompts ready, and they're going to be downloadable below in the comments and in the body below, all the primary emotions, high status experiences, and so on and so forth. So let's begin with this one. This is my profile. It's a demographic profile. You don't even need this. Just what, what age are they and what kind of stage of life are they in? So let's plug this in to ChatGPT and walk you through it step by step. So let's go in there, let's paste it in there. So midlife crisis at crossroads, wants independence, wants to be with the kids, wants a family man, conflict with kids. And by the way, this is going to apply to you whether you're targeting an individual, a business, whether you're selling anything related to health, wealth, relationships, just substitute out this second line here because there's always a conflict let's just let's just give an example if someone wants to do health if someone wants to improve their health that the conflict would typically be they want to improve health they want to be social but they want to be social and they want to have a drink with their friends they want to improve health but they really really enjoy eat, drinking fine wines and eating good quality food taking wealth. They really, this is my market by the, what's the conflict? The, the conflict is they really, really want to improve their wealth but and they want to be independent but at the same time they want to be there for their family and they want to have time for their family, aka work-life balance. So here you are, it's pulled it out. Describe me a common dilemma faced by many people in midlife. The desire for independence and personal fulfillment versus the desire to be a devoted family man. You could just push this in, you would probably have enough to get the insight, but we're going to take it deeper, right? If we think about it, 
every single business, every single great buyer persona analysis and client analysis is bridging the gap between where they are and where they want to be and speaking to that conflict in the middle and showing them a clear path. If you can understand and show and demonstrate using language posts that you understand their problem, people automatically will believe you have the solution regardless of you having social proof and so on and so forth. So what are we gonna do with this? We're gonna look at it, reflect on their priorities, what matters most, communicate with their partner, what do they believe improves their status? Why is it important to really understand what improves their status? People don't buy things, in my case, to get leads or improve the business. They don't even buy a pair of jeans because they like the pair of the jeans. They buy the pair of jeans because of how they feel, how they feel when they have the pair of jeans. Or in other words, everybody does something because of how they feel. The one determinant of action is how people feel. And one of the biggest buyer drivers in B2B and B2C, wherever you are, is how people feel and their status. Their status, how they feel in front of other people. In fact, I would argue if you go to lose weight, you don't lose weight because you want to lose weight. You lose weight because it's so that you can feel good as fitting to the pair of jeans you couldn't fit in for 10 years and then the feeling when you walk in a room and everybody sees you. So what do they believe improves their status? So let's go to this. Taking this family man, I mean, it could be man, woman, whatever, right? All right. Good, so I like this one. I like this one here, number two. And, and by the way, <laughs> I'm doing this as kind of me and my market. My market is me, right? So being involved in their children's lives. Many men take pride in being involved in parents, being involved parents and believe that a status of a family man is tied to their ability to be there for their children school events, coaching school teams, and so I'm going to take this one. And by the way, interestingly, our best performing posts and ads use symbolism and imagery that projects this number two, that shows this number two, that illustrates this number two. And in fact, now I look at it, this number three, being a good partner. When I have Paula, my wife, in, in images, and when I sometimes have the kids, talk about experiences with the kids, it connects with my market much more powerfully than talking about getting more leads, growing your business. Because status, root, primal emotions will always outperform the things that everybody else can say. Anybody in my market, and arguably your market, can talk about more leads, they can talk about losing weight, they can talk about better relationships, but can they show it through imagery? Can they elicit it and know that it's what they need to do? Because this is what AI is showing you to do. You're not gonna need a lot of business coaches for this, right? You're just gonna need any more. You can just use this. This is better than most business coaches out there. Having a good reputation in their community. Interestingly, this is something we did with a franchise owner who has a local franchise. We positioned them as a member of the community. That in there in itself is a social media strategy to position yourself as a member of the community. She had a sales franchise and we have another lady who does um, franchise businesses. That in itself is a strategy. All your imagery, go to local businesses, interview local businesses, show yourself at local events and do posts around the community, and people will want to do business with someone that's a member of the community. Let's go to something deeper. Let's go to this. What type of books would they read? Because we're really gonna pull out the data. Stop generating, what type of books would they read? Self-improvement books. So let's go to one of the books I read when I was getting going, Giant, Awakening the Giant Within, and because this was where I was, and we're always ultimately in a business, Typically, we're always, our clients are always where we were a few years ago, right? So 9,070 reviews. All right, let's cut and paste this data. Oh, there it is, see all reviews, better. Sometimes it gives me too much. So let's get this data. We're gonna use this as a data source for all of the diving in. Crunching the data, synthesizing the data, doing what we could not do. Okay, here is an analysis for dev books. Please summarize how it helped them the most. 
more empowered and com control of their emotions, exercises and techniques, beliefs, values and rules. Right, this is, this is, this is a marketing book in, in a paragraph. There's so much we can break down here. I'm not even going to go any further on this. We're going to take this and we're going to turn it into content. We have enough to do the content right now and you will have enough for the content if you need it. So all I've done in order to do this is I've just taken all the information out of here and I've separated it and cleaned it within this Google document so that I can use all the information we've just put in as one prompt. And by the way, this is downloadable below, so you can just fill in the gaps for you. And if you look here, tools, word count, that's a prompt of 1,557 words. And why is that important? ChatGPT is only as good as the input we give it. The output is only going to be as good as what you give it. You can't put a piece of white bread in a toaster and expect to get a cheese sandwich out. So this is pure, pure data that we can use to get great output, emotions, feelings, needs, wants, conflict. So let me give you an example. I just cut and paste it. I put it into ChatGPT. Let me just scroll up and show you exactly what I wrote. And this is available down below. Okay, here's all the data on Family Man. Please write a sales email that will get them to watch a video about the topic. Then I just pasted it all in. And look what happened. Let's go down. There we go. Subject line there. This is actually a really good subject line. It creates curiosity. That's why I'm excited to share with you a video about the topic of being a family man. Speaks to all the pain points, all the things we know they're in and, and, and are, are dealing with. And then I asked for three more versions of the same prompt in this voice of Simon Sinek. So there we go. Fantastic. This is one prompt that you can just put in a document and use in all your content. And if you go into ChatGPT4 and as the further versions come out, it's going to allow you to put even more information into it and you can add to it over time. And if you want to do that, I'm just going to put up here a link to a video that shows you how to do a landing page with ChatGPT. You can use this prompt here, a LinkedIn messaging sequence with ChatGPT. You can also use this prompt. With that said, have a wonderful day. I really hope this has helped you. This is powerful stuff. Take care and I give me a subscribe if you find it valuable, all right? Bye-bye.